And once we have this demand and supply, we can bring them together and understand how this model explains the working of the free market and how it explains that, look, regardless of what price you start off with, these consumers and producers, they will always come to a page where there will be no shortage and no surplus. We can explain that now once we have our demand and supply. So let me explain that to you from the very beginning. And this is how you're going to express your answers in your essay questions as to how the free market works and how is the price and quantity of every product determined in the free market. So in the market of any product, in this case ice creams, the consumers, they will bring in the demand of the product, which we now understand is this entire thing over here. And the producers, they will bring in the supply of the product, which we now understand is this entire thing over here. And of course, this demand and supply, they both assume that all the non-price factors are constant. And then the question is that which of these many different possible prices will actually exist in the market? Now, these prices over here and these prices over here are all the same. It's just that this is the demand or the consumer side. This is the supply on the producer side. And free market economic theory predicts, and we will prove uh, why it's, this prediction is right. The free market economic theory predicts that, look, this price of 150 is the price that will exist in, in the market because this is the only price at which the quantity demanded of 400 is exactly the same as quantity supplied of 400. At any other price, quantity demanded and quantity supplied are different if you compare these two tables. So this is the only unique price where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied and therefore free market economic theory will tell you that look, you don't need to do anything. You can start with a randomly chosen price. You can start with any price. It will automatically gravitate towards this 150 and it will give you this nice equilibrium of no shortage and no surplus. Now to see that and as I go on uh, to, to give you some more terminology or you can say useful material for your A level exams, uh, I will just start off first of all by assuming uh, that uh, the price is lower than this equilibrium price of 150. So we will choose the lowest price of 50 over here and then I will choose the price to be higher than uh, 150 the equilibrium price that we are saying the prices will gravitate towards. So we will choose the other possibility where prices are higher than 150 and we will pick the highest possible price price of 250 and let me now show you how in both of the cases the prices will automatically move to this nice equilibrium price of 150 so starting with the lowest price of 50 you see the simple logic here is that if anything is too cheap the lowest price then we, there will be a lot of consumers who will want to buy this cheap product but there will not be a lot of producers who would want to produce and sell it because low price, it means low profit, right? So if something is very cheap, you will most likely see a shortage of that product. More people will want to buy, fewer people will want to sell. That is what a shortage means, excess and demand. And our demand table is telling us that at this price of 50, quantity demanded will just be 800. And our supply is telling us that at this price of 50, the quantity supplied will just be 150. So you will have an excess demand or shortage of 650 units. Now shortage, it means that there is going to be a long queue of potential customers waiting outside of this ice cream shop, trying to get lucky and get one of these few possible uh, available ice creams. And what happens when there is a shortage? Now, I think we can all relate as consumers that whenever there is a shortage of a product, its price will start to increase. In fact, this is so true that we say that this is, and this is what you need to remember, this is the first function of price, that whenever there is a shortage, the price will start to increase. And this increase in price signals that there is a shortage. So this is the signaling function of the price. And as price increases to 100, it signals there is a shortage. And on the other hand, it will sort of discourage some of these consumers to leave the market. So at when the price increases to 100, quantity demanded is falling to 600. This is where price is playing its second main function or role. An increase in price rations out or kicks out some of the consumers, or we should say some of the excess consumers. So that's the rationing function of prices. And then price will play the third important function as it increases from 50 to 100. 
as it increases the profitability to the producers will increase since we are assuming all non-price factors are constant so more price means more profit so this rising price gives an incentive of profit to these producers who at this now higher price of 100 will increase the quantity supply to 300 so remember in this simple discussion you have already learned the three main functions of price it rising price it signals there is a shortage then it rations out some of the excess consumers and then it gives incentives to producers to produce more so the three functions of price the the signaling function the rationing function and the incentive function anyhow let us move on we will still have a shortage there is a, a fewer shortage of 300 ice creams only when the price has increased to 100 but since there is still a shortage the price will again increase this time to 150 and this is the magical price this is when enough consumers would have been rationed out and enough producers would have been attracted uh, into this market uh, through the incentive of uh, larger profits that the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded they will match and at this point we say this is the equilibrium price meaning that this is going to be a point of stability the price will no longer have any tendency to change because the consumers are happy the producers are happy and there is nothing that is going to change this price anymore now on the other hand you may start with a very expensive or a very high price in this case a price of 250 now if some product is too expensive then consumers will of course rush out of the market they will leave the market they will buy less and in this case they will just buy 100 ice creams whereas the producers they would love to produce and sell this pro uh, this product because they can make a lot of profit because of the high prices so in our case at this price of 250 the quantity supplied is 800 but that creates the problem of a surplus of 700 ice creams surplus meaning more ice creams have been produced than what the consumers want to buy excess supply so the surplus of 700 units would now mean that there are ice cream shops that have produced ice cream but they are finding it difficult to sell it so what will they do again we can all relate to the idea that the prices will start to fall because these producers they, in order to somehow sell these ice creams somehow get rid of them they will start offering discounts and start putting sales so the price will fall and this time the falling price will attract these consumers and give them the incentive to come and consume more so the quantity demanded will increase to 200 whereas this this in fall in price will kick out or ration out some of the excess producers so the quantity supplied will fall and the surplus it's still there but now it will be just a 400 ice creams but as long as there is a surplus the price will keep on increasing and it will increase to 150 some more producers will be kicked out from the market discouraged by the falling prices whereas some more consumers will enter the market encouraged by the now cheaper ice cream and you will again you see gravitate automatically towards this price of 150 whether you start with a price that is too high or too low automatically you will get to this nice equilibrium point so that basically this has been a long video but that's this basically covers all the basic theory that you need to know about demand and supply all the definitions the way the equilibrium works and the functions that the price the role that the price plays in achieving this equilibrium so a long video but if you have put in the effort to understand everything over here this is uh, an effort that will be well worth it because these are the basics that really you need to understand to actually understand economics conceptually this is what a real strong base means if you can think of demand and supply through these numbers and once you have this understanding now the next steps are very easy now what we are supposed to do is that in the next video we will put this understanding of demand into a graph and get a demand curve and then we will put this understanding of supply into a graph and get a supply curve and then instead of talking about this market equilibrium and this rule of prices and how this equilibrium is reached through all of these numbers which as we have seen takes quite a lot of time we will talk about all of this market mechanism through the graphs of demand which is known as demand curve and the graph of supply which is known as supply curve so we do that all in the next video remember it's just going to be a graphical explanation of all these basic core ideas